guys and welcome back to another vlog i am alexia nicole and i'm living my life by design so i know that i've been telling y'all i'm gonna do an uber video but honestly i haven't really been doing uber that much lately but what i have been doing is this other delivery thing for heb y'all know my favorite grocery store heb is in texas i don't know if it's outside of texas but San Antonio, Houston, you know, other cities in Texas. Um, so I just decided to get on here and do a quick video because I just got a ding to go pick up um, a delivery and deliver it. So I'm just gonna take y'all with me. Today is National Margarita Day and I would love to have a margarita right now, but I'm trying to be good, I'm trying to be good. I'm down four pounds. <laughs> from the beginning of the year so let me guess um so just still trying to be good but anyway so let's talk about uber right so i was doing uber and lyft and the process that i was doing before i bought mahogany lovely mahogany um there's there's from what i know three ways that you can do a rental car process for uber and lyft so uber has what they call uber fare and you pay a $500 non-refundable deposit and then that allows you to rent a car for them from them on a weekly to a monthly basis for a very discounted rate I think I saw some cars on there um, for like 150 for the week on up just depending on the vehicle Lyft has what they call Lyft Express so Lyft Express, I believe, is like a $250 deposit, and then I think they just kind of pair up with car dealerships in your area, and then you rent cars from them at a discounted rate, but it seemed like they only had one car dealership that they worked with in Houston, so every time I would try to get on there and see what they had, I wasn't able to like get a car for like another week you know they were just booked out so far in advance so I never actually got the opportunity to do that one but what I was doing was hire car and I'm gonna put it here H Y R E C A R hire car so that's basically like people renting out their personal vehicles so you go to hirecar.com all these different vehicles listed and a price per day so cars started from i believe the lowest i saw was like 25 dollars up to somewhere like a hundred dollars a day just depending on the vehicle and what all features it offered you know the newer it is you know all of that stuff so that was what i was doing so you with that one if you're paying with a debit card, I think they require a $200 refundable deposit. If you're paying with a credit card, you just pay with credit card and then you know they'll charge you if they have any fees to charge you for later. Um, so my experience with Hire Car was rather interesting. So the first one I did, I think I did it maybe about five times. Eh, and it's it's not the best like as far as monetary wise like trying to save a coin like it's not the best option um so the first time i did i think i went to the car for seven days i think the car was like 25 dollars a day it was like a little hyundai elantra um and the interaction with the person was decent you know like the guy that owned the car like i ended up actually getting a flat tire in that car he was very responsive, sent out roadside assistance, paid for me to obviously get the tire replaced and all of that stuff. Um, but the car itself, I mean, it was the Hyundai Elantra. Um, the, I guess the person that had it before me was smoking in the car, so it kind of had like a smoky smell. Like that was really my only complaint. Like, so that was cool experience. Then after that, I rented another vehicle, and I believe that one was like a. Mazda CX-9 kind of like my car but the bigger version it was really nice but you know the nicer the car the more money it cost so for that you know I wasn't driving enough to really cover the cost of the car and make enough money and I only kept that one for like three days um I don't remember everything but there was one incident I had one bad incident with a gentleman 
Um, I don't know. I was just having bad luck, I guess, you guys, because I ended up getting another flat tire. And this guy, you know, hire car wants you to contact the owners of the car and see how they want you to move forward with whatever. But they're supposed to be responsible for any, you know, damages like that to the car, like flat tires, anything like that. They're supposed to be responsible for. So I ended up getting a, another flat tire, which was insane to me. Um, and so this guy, this time, I texted him when it happened, called him. It took him like an hour and a half to respond. So I'm not just going to sit around waiting for you to respond while I got this flat tire. So I went ahead and, you know, called roadside assistance, you know, and paid for that money out of my pocket. And all I wanted him to do was reimburse me. The man didn't want to reimburse me. Because remember, now, you're dealing with people and their personal vehicles. So, you know, just people are different. I ended up taking that car right back to him on that spare tire. And I was like, give me my money back. So, that is kind of the process of hire a car. Like, it is what it is. It's not the cheapest and best way. But if you got to get around, if you're trying to make money with Uber, I would suggest getting the most reliable car that you can, the best on gas mileage, um, and the cheapest one that you can. Um, so maybe for like seven days, and they provide insurance too. That's what else I need to say. So when you do it through Hire Car, they will provide you insurance for basically the length of time that you're going to have the vehicle. Um, and it's Uber and Lyft approved. So that is the good thing about them. So if I would do like seven days for a car that was like $25 a day with taxes and insurance, and sometimes it gives you a little discount depending on how long you're renting the car for. Most times I didn't really want to go over like $300 for the week for whatever car. Um, so with that being said, then my goal would be to drive enough to cover, of course, the cost of the car and then still be able to pocket money. Um, so what I was doing, I was, I'm an early bird. I, I wake up early. My sleep still has not gotten back right. Um, so I would wake up between like four and six in the morning, turn on the Uber app, turn on Lyft simultaneously. Um, and whoever would ding me first is, you know, just what I would do. And then I would drive for the day until I made about my goal. My daily goal would be like a hundred dollars. Um, and I just did that. And then, you know, most weeks, unless I was just being lazy, um, it was easy to do, make a hundred dollars a day. And Uber in Houston, it's not like LA or New York where people are constantly like needing Ubers because Houston is such a driving city. Like everybody has cars here. Um, so some days I can knock it out in four hours. Some days I would have to take a break, take a break in the middle of the day and then drive a little bit more later on. But I don't want to drive at night because that's when the crazies come out. Um, so yeah, so that's what I was doing. And then one day I was talking to another Uber driver and he told me about HEB delivery. So I signed up for HEB delivery, and I'm probably not going to go into as much detail about this because, I mean, unless you live in Texas, you know, you really can't do HEB delivery, but it's basically kind of like Uber and Lyft. You turn on the app and you wait for a notification for a delivery to be picked up. Now, HEB delivery, I believe, pays the drivers a base rate, and then your tip is whatever percentage of the total order that they're ordering. So what I, that's what I've been doing mostly now because it's just easier. You don't really have to have people in your car. You're not driving around and bouncing around the city of Houston all day, which is a massive city. Um, and you make more money. So they have two options. You can turn it on whenever you want. Um, and that just pays you whatever the, the flat rate pay is. So like right now I have two deliveries to go pick up. And it says the pay for those are... One is in between nine and twelve dollars, and the other one is in between eleven and fifteen, or something like that. Um, or you can do it to where you actually have a schedule. So they open up the schedule. I'm about to order some food. Okay, but anyway, so yeah, back to the HEB delivery. So you can do it sporadically, where you just turn it on whenever you're available. 
and you go pick up and you deliver and you pay, and they pay you whatever the rate is per that delivery or deliveries. Um, or you can sign up to do an actual schedule. So if you're actually scheduled and you're quote unquote on the clock, then they pay you a minimum of $10 an hour. So regardless of if you do zero deliveries to 15 deliveries, they're going to pay you a minimum of $10 an hour. But if your tips obviously equal out to more than the $10 an hour, then you also get that. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, other than being in Taco Cabana trying to get me a little salad. Um, it's really easy and I I haven't really been doing Uber and Lyft as much. The only upside for me about Uber and Lyft was is that you could do um, instant cash out if you want. So you know if you know if you need like twenty dollars real quick and it's not in your bank account and you've actually made it through Uber or Lyft, then you can just do instant cash out and just have your money. I think they charge like fifty cents or something like that for the instant cash out. With the HEB deliveries, they pay you like every Monday, I believe. So, yeah. I just kind of wanted to give y'all a little update. I still, and I, I know, I know, I know, I need to do the real estate video. I'm just kind of waiting for me to like finish taking my tests my, and my classes. So I can just, my mind is just not boggled down with a whole bunch of thoughts. But, so I am a licensed real estate agent. I've been licensed since 2016. But in Texas, after your first two years, you have to um, take what they call your SAE courses. And I don't know what it stands for, but it's basically continuing education and you have to take another 90 hours of classes. So that's what I've been doing. So when my license, when it was time for me to renew in July of 2018, I put my license in inactive status. Um, so that way I wasn't having to pay dues and all that because I was flying and I really, I wasn't selling, like I didn't have time. So now I'm just trying to get everything back up to date so I can go sign up with the brokerage and fully get back into real estate. So just in between that time, I've just been doing this and living my best life. <laughs> um, but yeah, let me, um, I'll just, I'll show y'all how this little delivery thing works and then that'll be it. And then I have, and y'all can probably expect a real estate video um, next week because I take my last two classes finally on Monday and Tuesday of next week. Um, it's over marketing, real estate marketing. Um, and then I can go sign up with the brokerage and I'll be ready to do these real estate videos for y'all. For those who are wondering why I haven't been doing them yet. Um, but tell me what y'all want to know. Do you want to know like how you become a realtor? Um, you know, the buying process, the selling process. Please comment down below and tell me what y'all want to know in these videos so I know what I should be talking about so I don't bore y'all to death, okay? Anyways, let me get my food and then we'll go deliver these groceries. I just got to H-E-B. So you pull up at the curbside parking and you text that to that number. One of the curbside employees will come and ask me in a second which deliveries I have. I'll tell them and then they'll bring the deliveries to the car, pack them in the car, and then I drive off about my business. Hi, Michelle and Lamel. You need to bring me lunch next time. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be right out. Thank you. See how easy that is and how nice they are? So they just loaded up. Now I'm about to just go deliver. Easy peasy. All right, y'all, I just made it to the house and I actually delivered to the same house this morning. So I guess she didn't get enough. Okay, so she's saying this isn't her order. Good God, it's supposed to be simple. I've never had this happen before. And of course, the day that I want to vlog, it's something going on. Okay, well that was an oopsie doop. So I delivered to this same lady earlier this morning and she asked me, she said, I don't think I ordered paper towels, but on our end, we don't see the order or anything like that. We, we literally just go pick it up, they put it in the car, we deliver. We don't know what they ordered. So I guess they, redid her order but still didn't put in what the one thing that i'm supposed to be going back for i don't even know and i'm not even about to stress about it 
Um, but now I'm going to go deliver this second order that I have because I picked up two at once. Go deliver this second one and then I'll have to go back to the HEB and give them these groceries back. Because that's the correct thing to do. And then maybe I will pick up her paper towels and bring them back over here. I don't know. It is what it is. But she was super nice. So, I mean, so I'm here delivering now. And the worst part is when people order at apartment complexes and they're on the second and third floor and you got to carry a case of water. But then you have people nice enough like that that meet you downstairs because they know you got a case of water and they carry it up themselves and they give you cash tips. So this is why I like this way better than Uber and Lyft. Nobody's in mahogany, keeps her clean. I'm not like driving her all around the city of Houston. Um, I mean, there was like, like, I know I probably put 200 miles or whatever in the car in one day, just driving from all these suburbs of Houston. So when you do this, you sign up for the area that you actually live in. And I live in the Cypress Tomball area, which for this HEB delivery, it's actually pretty busy. So I probably go to maybe five different HEBs in my area, three mostly, but then sometimes they send me to these other two that are a little further out, but still nothing like what I was doing with Uber and Lyft driving all across Houston, Texas. So that's that. Now I'm on my way to get gas. And then um, I need to stop that. Like, is it true like your car like lives longer if you fill her up, her, cause she's a her, like at half a tank instead of like actually waiting until she gets empty? Somebody used to tell me that. Was it? I think it was one of my aunts, but who knows? But anyways, Mahogany's thirsty. So we're gonna go get her some juice, go back to HEB, and hopefully get another delivery so I can keep making this money, honey. <laughs> this is a trickery, right? Because a lot of y'all last time were commenting on the gas prices in Huntsville. It was $1.95 just regular, but see here, it's $1.99 if you use cash, and then $2.09 if you use your card. Um, and I am using my card, and I'm not about to go get cash just for the gas station. All right, y'all, so I went and took back the groceries, and then they gave me her trash bags so now i'm on my way back to her house this is my third time going there today so i don't even need to use the gps i know exactly where i'm going um and now i just got two more orders from a different hev so i'm gonna go there the first one says it's worth in between 10 to 14 dollars and the other one is in between uh 12 and 17 13 and 17 something like that so most of the uber trips that i was doing like they would barely be clear like nine dollars unless like i would go to the airport like if you go to the airport to sit in here in i think this is a houston thing you actually have to go to this airport office thing and get a little a little thing on your car that says you're allowed to pick up uber and lyft um but once you actually get to the airport you have to sit in the queue so there's two airports here in Houston. There's a really big one, IAH Airport. Y'all know y'all airport codes. Um, and like anytime I would go there, there would at least be 200 to 250 other Uber lifts waiting in the parking lot. And you just, you know, it puts you in the queue from when you pull up into the parking lot. It works based off GPS, obviously. And then you just wait. So that could be like a two hour wait and like those rides would be like decent you know sometimes just depending how far i think the most i ever made like off an of airport run was like 35 dollars or something like that um and then it's a lot of gas and it's just one trip and then you know trying to see if you even get rides on the way back to make it really worth your while stuff like that so yeah, uber it's okay if you really uber lift all whatever any ride share like if you like driving I guess it's okay but that money just for me like it was just I didn't like all the effort that I had to put into it like you know you got to get on the app and at least here in Houston just because like I was saying it's not like a, a super crazy 
busy city for Uber and Lyft. You got to get on the app and see like which areas of town are, um, you know, in need of drivers at the moment. And then usually it's not my area of town where I live. People don't really Uber Lyft, period. So I would either have to go like downtown or like to the airports, as I was saying, just other areas. So it just wasn't really worth the money like this Uber, like H-E-B is doing for me right now. I'll be right back. So anyways, so the upside of doing this for me is that with Uber, I guess the best way to put it is I felt like I was like chasing rides, like trying to find people to pick up. And that was really annoying for me. And that's literally just because I'm in Houston, Texas. Now, you know, in New York, West Coast, it's probably different and you can probably make really good money doing it. There are people here that do it full time, but they probably drive a lot. And I'm not trying to drive a lot like that. So I like this because I turn what I do now is I turn it on in the morning once, you know, I've done my morning routine and I wait for the first ding. So the delivery periods, I believe, start between 7.45 and end at 10 p.m. So usually I'm up by seven um, and I'll turn it on. And usually I do have like a, a 8 a.m. delivery and a few just sparsed out throughout the day. But the good thing is, is that I can keep it on and whenever they ding me, I just go. So even if, you know, so I can still be at home doing whatever I need to be doing um, and then if they ding, I just go run and do this real quick and then I go back home and then wait for another one or go do whatever else errands I need to run and wait for another one instead of sitting out on the street trying to stock, um, Uber, Uberers, Ubers, is that what you call people that need a, a Uber lift, lifters, Ubers? <laughs> Anyways, y'all, so let me do these two deliveries and we'll see if I get any more. Got to my next H-E-B. This one's a little, this setup's a little different, but text the number and then they'll come to the window. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. I have a pickup for Danette and Ron. Danette and Ron? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. See how easy that is? I love that part. <laughs> oh, and the other good thing about this is that you can have people in the car with you. So like when you're doing Uber and Lyft, you can't have anybody riding with you while you Uber or Lyft, you know, because they count your seats and if you got, if you're picking up four people, you need all your seats available. But with this, there's no restrictions on that. So like the other night, um, I got an order, but me and my mom were actually going to head out to go do something. So I brought her along with me. We did the order and then we went and did what we were going to do. And in the car next to me right now, it was like a little soccer mom, soccer mom band. She's picking up orders and she has her kids in the back. So, you know, it's a good side hustle that keeps you safer than Uber and Lyft. Um, and you can do it whenever you want and bring the kids, the dogs. I saw a lady with her dog in the car one day. Aspen and Denver not getting in mahogany yet. We got to let her stay nice and new and, and fresh for a minute. Um, but this little girl is so cute over there. She's like looking at me and waving. Um... <laughs> so stinking cute. But yeah, so many perks to doing this than Uber Lyft. Firm's on her way, guys. I moved the position of the phone. The, the radio screen thing was in the way. Oh, she's pregnant. I'm going to go help her. deliveries both of them are pretty big so let's pray we're not going to an apartment complex on the second or third floor unless they got elevators in Jesus name <laughs> Help. Help. 
that was easy. And the hubby came outside and helped carry most of the groceries, see? So next delivery is four minutes away. Right onto Stubner Airline Road. Okay. Next delivery is four minutes away. So, and then we'll see if I get another. If not, I'll just head. I think I want some crawfish, honestly. Can so I might go Stubner get some. Airline Road for three quarters of a mile. If I don't get another delivery, I'll just go and find me some crawfish to eat because I want crawfish so bad for whatever reason right now. All right, so pretty much done. Just have to make sure I get her to sign for delivery. I'm supposed to make them sign every time, but especially when they have alcohol or wine, you have to wear sure make them sign. So, gonna take these last few bags in and then get her signature and go on home. Okay, so change of plan. I'm not gonna go home. I have tons of energy and I'm still gonna wait a little bit longer until I go eat my crawfish. So I've decided to turn on Uber and Lyft and literally as soon as I turned on Uber, I got a ride. So I'll do this in between time or until I just don't wanna do it anymore or if HEB gives me another delivery, then of course I'll go do that first. But I mean, you know, it's just, it's about a balance. 1, feet, turn right onto Stubner Airline Road. So I'm gonna go pick up this little high schooler, probably take them home and we'll see what the next ride will be. Okay. So let me explain to y'all from what I remember, because it's been, it's, I haven't really Ubered in a while. Um, but Uber, so I just did a nine minute drive. It was like, I don't know how many miles, whatever. So the lowest Uber will pay you for any ride is $2.28. Those are for y'all lazy folks that don't like to walk walkable distances, right? Those little five minute rides. Um, so that's the lowest you'll get paid but if it's you know something a little longer so you get your base pay and then they have a rate that they pay you for the mileage of the ride and then they have a rate that they pay you for the time that the ride took so i think i haven't looked i'll have to go look because they just gave me another ride so as soon as i dropped her off there was another ride in the queue waiting for me so i accepted it and now i'm on my way to go pick that person up and that ride from here to there is a 17 minute drive and you don't actually get paid for that portion you get paid for when the rider is actually in the car so you know it has you know, it is what it is I mean it is what it is right so let's go let me get off of this phone thing because it's 3 46 p.m. school buses are out kids is crossing the street and I need to pay attention all right y'all it is now 6 16 I think I've done four or five Uber rides and they were all back to back, meaning like before I ended a trip, they already had another one in my queue. So I'm down, uh, I'm like close to downtown. It is rodeo season in Houston, Texas, and I did not want to be in this mix. So I'm turning off the Uber and I am done for the night. I made $46.19 doing those five trips with Uber, four or five trips. I think it was five. So just so y'all can get a gist of, you know, what it's like, you know, so that's not, that's really not bad. That's actually a lot better than what normally happens when I'm Ubering because all of these trips were like 15 plus minutes and, you know, two of them were pretty good distances. So it made the money rack up a lot quicker than usually. So I feel like I've had a good day. I've made at least a hundred dollars between Uber and HEB and, and now I can go home and get up out of this Houston traffic. So, um, oh, what I wanted to tell y'all about. So I did want to mention um, Instacart. So when I went and picked up groceries, the pregnant girl that I was helping load my car, she was telling me that she used to do Instacart, but with Inst she used to drive, deliver for Instacart. So, you know, Instacart is another app where you can grocery shop, I guess, at like all these different grocery stores, but with Instacart, like when you drive for them, you actually go in, do the grocery shopping, and then deliver. And uh, I don't know how much she said that they got paid, but she's like, it's not really the best. And sometimes you drive really far distances for not that much money. 
Um, but I'm, I'm good with my HEB and the Uber whenever I want to do it. So that is what I have been up to. If y'all have been wondering, I'm just out here living life, just taking it a day at a time, just seeing what God has in store for me. So now with the Uber app and Lyft, you can filter it to where you only get rides that you um, that are going to be heading in the direction that you want to go to. So I put my home address in and say, okay, only give me rides that are going in this direction. So I just did that and now I have one ride that I'm about to pick up. But as of right now, I have made $50 from those five rides, which is actually pretty decent. So that's an average $10 a ride. Um, so I can't really complain. You know, like it's been a good night so far for Uber. So total today so far, I've made a, a little bit over $100 between Uber and HEB. And now I'm about to do see how many more rides I can get until I make it home. And then I'll just be done for the night. So I'll update y'all once I get back home. Y'all, Mahogany and I have been whipping the wheel tonight. It is now 7.50 p.m. I am back on my side of town. Let me get y'all some lights. Oh, I'm, I'm oily. Um, 7.50 p.m. I'm back on my side of town. I've just turned off the Uber. I did a total of eight trips today and made $100. Like, that is unheard of for me. It's just, it's a Friday night. Rodeo is popping. People trying to get out. It's National Margarita Day. Everybody living their best life. So today has been a good money-making day for ride share and grocery deliveries. If y'all are about that life, go sign up, do it. If you have a full-time job and you're just trying to get extra money in your pocket, these are good things to do. Um, but yeah, so that's it, guys. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please do not forget to comment down below and let me know what type of real estate videos y'all want to see, what y'all want me to talk about, so I can go ahead and get my knowledge game up and make sure that I'm putting out good videos for you guys, okay? Anyways, until next time, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. Bye!